Okay, so that's the that's the um, that's the physical part. Uh, I want to just show you in our book if you have it. Uh, page 59, the Urban Dirt Farmer, is a great, very, very quick summary of all the things we're talking about. Uh, smell test, squeeze test, separation test, soil drainage test. When you have the plug out, you pour water in there and you can see how quickly it drains. What happens if it was a very sandy soil, what would happen? Fast. What happens if it was, if it was a compacted clay soil, what would happen? It would just sit. So, pour water in a pit, get an idea also it's another way of assessing your your soil all these different techniques pour just pour water in the pit and you can kind of see how quickly it comes, it comes through <coughs> um, if after an hour it's still in there back to clay uh, luckily I am in the process of doing a soil test in my house for um, more of the chemistry side of things pH minerals uh, organic matter lead that's usually what you do with it with a soil test. So all you gotta do is you go out into your yard, pick a area. For us, there's a couple areas of 100 square feet. So we get our greenhouse. So I went in and I, and I had my hand shovel. I did six to 12 samples mixed throughout the greenhouse. Put all those samples together in the greenhouse, from the greenhouse, in a bag or a bucket or whatever, what have you, and mix it up. Okay. So now this is my greenhouse sample bag. I take that, let it, uh, you can either let it dry a little bit in there. What I do is you, they want it really dry, so you can take your sample, and I just put this on the kitchen floor. They want one cup of the mixed sample, and let it dry. It does two things. One is it is, is lighter, so when you ship it, it's not, it doesn't have water, so you're not paying for water when you ship it. Also, they can just put it right in their system and not have to worry about, they want it to be dry weight when they test it. So it helps them on their end, unless they ask you. So what I do, this is everything you need. A box, the address, your, your sample. I just did this in the last class. Uh, you take this, pour the sample, one cup sample in your bag, a dry weight, label it. This happens to be my area where I'm growing a pear tree. So then, they, then when they give you your sheet back, your results, this will correspond to the data. It'll be called pair. Um, but this is, is my sheet that has the instructions, what they need from you, and you, you fold this up with a check because you have to pay for it. And so you add your samples to the box with your application and a check off the UMass. That's it. And they email you the results. They email you the results. Uh, I'm doing the $15 one because I want organic matter. Uh, you can see an example of seven years ago we did the same tests. The results are, I forgot to bring them up by my books on the floor up there. And then one is a comparison, one is a, a sample of our leaded garden soil before we started the forest garden. And the other one is a sample from the farm we were at before in Southampton that was a beautiful, nice, fairly undisturbed um, field, and, it's, and you, can, you look at them, you can obviously see a nice, rich agricultural soil is very different than urban and Holyoke, Jonathan's backyard soil. But the goal is, when I get that this sample back, uh, compare not only to the first year we started where it was crap, but also I can compare it to that organic soil that we started with in Southampton. My goal is hopefully it'll be more similar to the agricultural soil at this point than the original urban soil. Yep. So that's, that's the technique for um, for doing that. But they, um, they do, Jonathan, they do yep. like heavy metals, but like are there other things that they can't test for? Like Yes, there we... are. Um, and I can get into that next. The geeky side of this whole stuff, this whole science. Um, Soul of the Soil is a great book. Uh, Grace Pashuni was one of the, in the 1980s was the, one of the founders, one of the creators of the National Organic Standards. She lives in Vermont. She was one of my mentors when I was in school. This is awesome because she comes from a radical perspective, but she's very scientific in writing about soil 
working for organic farmers, and there's really some really great information here. Like, if a weed's growing there, what is it telling you? That's pretty awesome. Uh, really simple ways to, to think about how we should be farming. Um, and this is geeky, but there's a whole another another layer that we can talk about, which is called uh, um, the, this new science of nutrient dense farming. And so I have some tools here. And what was your question again? Oh, about stuff you can't test for. Yes, stuff you can't test for. Uh, this this test is for a, a weak, uh, a strong acid test, which is a way for traditional or conventional industrial farmers to get an idea of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, and some other, a couple, a few other micronutrients, calcium, and aluminum. Um, that's the strong acid test. The weak acid test is essentially a test that mimics what the plant roots are doing to the soil. They're, they're giving off weak acids and breaking down the soil's constituents into the, into the nutrients they need and they uptake them over time. Or the organisms around the plant roots are helping the soil do that. What's neat about the weak acid test is it can tell you not only the more diversity of nutrients in the soil, because you're not destroying the soil by using a strong acid. But it, it mimics what the plants are doing anyway. So the results tell you with this weak acid that the plants are using, this is what the plants are seeing in the soil at that moment with that soil. So that's a different lab. It's more expensive, but it's the same sampling technique. And there's, you can go online. Uh, I don't have the name of it with me right now, but um, nutrient dense nutrient-dense plant movement, gardening movement, or agricultural movement has examples of the weak acid test facilities you can ship them off to. Two other techniques of the nutrient-dense uh, uh, philosophy. One is a conductivity meter. And so this is a meter that you stick in the ground and it has little electrodes on it. And what is that, what is that telling us? What would electrodes be telling what, what, What's the benefit of getting a reading from Okay. Metallics. Metallics. All these things are true. It's telling you the complexity of the minerals in the soil and, and kind of their whether they're uh, high or low. It's telling you the, the capacity of, to hold moisture in the soil. It's also telling you um, the, the, the health and diversity of the micro, microorganisms and the organic matter of the soil. It seems like a stretch. But they're, they're, they're generalizations, they're, they're kind of, the more water you have, the, the higher conductivity, right? Electricity goes through materials faster, or electricity goes through water faster than it does go through the air, for example. Uh, the more complex minerals you have in the soil, the more electricity you'll be able to move through, like a little wire, like all those calcium um, atoms together will conduct electricity faster than no calcium atoms. Conductivity. The, if, it, if you push this into sand, you get a low conductivity reading. If you put it into really rich organic soil, high conductivity reading. So all the good things we're looking for read high on here. 